set of volts is a joule uh, per coulomb. Well, we know that the voltage uh, of a battery is the number of joules uh, which might be released when a coulomb of, uh, of charged particles uh, flows through it. Um, we can manipulate this equation and get that uh, the number of joules is dependent upon uh, the amount of charged particles flowing through, so the total charge, the number of coulombs, and uh, it's also to depend upon uh, the voltage. So that we see that joules, or energy, electrical energy, is equal to uh, the number of coulombs times uh, the volts of, the, of that battery. Um, now, uh, I'll remind you, uh, excuse me, uh, I'll remind you uh, that a coulomb is, is a unit of charge. Uh, one electron has a charge of 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Or uh, a coulomb is just the charge of, I think it's like 6.2 times 10 to the 18 uh, joules. And uh, voltage describes the electrical potential energy difference uh, of the cell between the anode and the cathode. Um, we've seen previously that uh, if, you were, if you were dealing with uh, a waterfall and you wanted to harness the energy of that waterfall, um, the amount of energy that you harness would be dependent upon uh, both the height from which that water falls uh, and also would be dependent upon the amount of water that falls. So uh, if you were to double the height uh, and hence double the potential energy uh, change of the water through that waterfall, you would double the amount of energy harnessed um, because the water as it falls further, it has it builds up in kinetic energy and then that greater amount of kinetic energy is transferred to the turbine. Or uh, if you had twice as much water flowing through, you should be able to, to harness twice as much energy. Now, uh, just as with the waterfall, um, the electrical energy of our battery is dependent upon the amount that flows through. So here, uh, the total number of electrons and hence uh, the total charge that flows through, the coulomb, um, which is like the amount of water that flows through. And it's also dependent upon the voltage of it, uh, which describes the electrical potential energy difference. So essentially, uh, it's like the height uh, of, of the water falling. Uh, now, uh, we can take this equation, electrical energy is equal to coulombs times voltage, volts, and, um, and we can uh, build another equation from that, um, which uh, is shown at the bottom here. But before I, I, I go into that, I'd like to introduce Faraday's constant, F. Now, a Faraday's constant is just the charge of one mole of electrons. So uh, it's 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. Or uh, we'll also see that it's 96,500 joules per volt mole uh, of electrons as well. Now, um, F, Faraday's constant, is the charge of, uh, of one mole of electrons. So if we wanted to know the total charge, we would just multiply um, uh, n, the number of moles, by the number, the amount of charge per mole. So this would give us the number uh, of, of coulombs transferred. So uh, this n times f, this is the charge transferred, and uh, our E of the cell is uh, the voltage of the cell. We saw that uh, electrical energy, uh, electrical energy up top was equal to the charge times the voltage. So here, uh, the electrical, the electrical energy uh, is equal to the charge and F times the voltage, E. Now, um, this electrical energy, uh, which can also be interpreted as work uh, if we have 100% efficiency, um, this uh, should, I guess, be equal to uh, up to a certain amount of energy. Uh, ultimately, we'll see that as the battery runs, the voltage of the cell um, changes. Uh, it, it, it usually will uh, get closer and closer to zero. Uh, and so um, ultimately, as E is decreasing, uh, our amount of energy that we would have expected to get should be decreasing as well. Uh, and yet, uh, for now, let's just consider that uh, this electrical energy that we get uh, is equal to the maximum amount of energy. And, and this uh, amount of energy is, is the change in the free energy. Um, so that uh, we can take this as being uh, delta G is equal to negative NFE of the cell. And we can also write uh, that 
uh, delta G standard. Uh, so at 25 degrees Celsius and having one molar concentrations of the compounds and one atmosphere of pressure is equal to negative NFE standard of the cell. You'll note that in this equation, if uh, you have a positive E cell uh, and you multiply by this negative, you get a negative delta G, which should make sense. We've said that uh, having positive E cells means that we have a, a spontaneous process. And we know that having negative delta G uh, standard is also spontaneous. So this is a central equation. Uh, and don't, don't forget, I guess, that N is the number of moles of electrons and F is Faraday's constant, 96,500 joules per volt mole for this equation, although it can also be coulombs per mole of electron. And we can manipulate this equation. We've seen previously that uh, delta G standard is equal to negative RT ln of K, so substitute delta G standard for that, or that for delta G standard. So we get this equation, which uh, can be manipulated to give the following. Uh, and you'll see here that uh, R is a constant, 8.31 joules per Kelvin mole. Um, temperature is in Kelvin constant, uh, if, especially if we're at standard uh, conditions. Uh, Faraday's constant is a constant. All these constants, uh, together they give us 0.0257. Um, and so uh, E standard cell is equal to 0.0257 and then divided by N, which does vary times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. And so we get this equation. And let me remind you that N is the number of moles of electrons transferred uh, in the balanced chemical equation. So uh, it's not the number of total moles transferred, but in the, the number of moles in the balanced chemical equation, balanced uh, equation. Okay. Um, now, you can also reinterpret this to give log of K as well, although this is not used as frequently. Uh, we'll use this often. So we see now that there's a relationship between uh, G and K, which we've shown in the last chapter, but also now between uh, delta G standard and E cell standard and also uh, K and E cell standard. These are all related to each other using all three equations. And um, we can kind of just talk about the, the signs of all these things. Um, if we have a negative delta G, uh, we know the reaction is spontaneous. We know that K should be greater than one. Um, and uh, we also now see using these equations that uh, E uh, will be positive. Um, having a spontaneous process, we have a positive E cell. Um, all of these things favor the formation of products. And uh, at the bottom here, I mean, a positive delta G, non-spontaneous reaction, we should not get as much product and we'll have more reactant left over. Um, so K is going to be less than one and we'll have a negative E value. Um, and uh, so that favors the formation of reactants. And then finally, if, if we're delta G uh, is equal to zero, we're at equilibrium, K is about equal to one and E is about equal to zero. Uh, which you can test all these things by, by plugging into those equations if you like. Um, thank you for watching, guys.